This savory tart starts with simple mashed potatoes and can be customized with any additions you like, such as cheese, bacon, and herbs. It's all wrapped up in a simple puff pastry, which makes it look very special and a little bit fancy. Welcome back to my kitchen, or if you're new here, my name is Stephanie, and this is Ginger Snap Kitchen. I started by allowing my store-bought puff pastry to thaw on the counter for at least 30 minutes. Then I shredded one cup of white cheddar cheese. I set the cheese aside. I placed one sheet of thawed puff pastry on the parchment lined pan. Then using a sharp knife, I traced a nine inch circle onto the pastry. Then I cut out the circle and removed the excess pastry. I saved those scraps for another project. I hope you can use your imagination for the next part because I forgot to hit record. Leaving a half inch border all the way around, I placed half of the shredded cheese onto the pastry circle. Then I placed about two cups of cooled mashed potatoes on top of the cheese and I spread it into an even layer. I sprinkled the surface with a pinch of fresh thyme. Then I added the remaining shredded cheese to the top. Next, I topped the cheese with about a quarter cup of finely chopped bacon. This of course is optional. I brushed the border lightly with an egg wash. The egg wash was simply one very well beaten egg and one tablespoon of water. Here's what I'm listening to. Then I applied a second nine inch pastry circle. I pressed the edges together with my fingers all the way around to ensure it was completely sealed. Then for reasons I can't explain, I press the edges together again with a fork. After that, I brush the entire surface with the egg wash, and then I place it into the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I removed it from the refrigerator and using the handle of my knife, I crimped the edge of the pastry as you can see here. Once that was finished, I used the dull side of my blade to create a pattern on the surface. I was very careful not to cut all the way through the pastry. Once I was finished, I moved it to a 425 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until it was perfectly golden brown. I garnished it with a few sprigs of fresh thyme. I would also like to have used a little flaky salt. Stay tuned to the end to see how that worked out. I allowed it to cool for about 10 minutes before cutting a slice. Despite a few setbacks, this turned out very nicely. And it's also quite beautiful. I hope you'll give it a try sometime. And if you have any ideas about other things that you could jam between two pieces of puff pastry, be sure to leave me a comment and let me know. And I'd love it if you'd take a moment to subscribe before you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching.